Can we expand the Wi-Fi signal without involving in the power source? Well, the solar panel plus a mesh network may be one of the solutions. And you can also pull the UTP cable to extend the Wi-Fi. Today, we received a case from one of our customers. Let's see what happened. Our customer needs to rebroadcast the network signal from the modem, which is about 500 feet away. The power source is not available at the new location. So his initial plan is to put up the mesh network and a solar panel power system. Hopefully, it can extend the Wi-Fi 500 feet far from the modem. Today in this video, we are going to talk about how to extend the Wi-Fi without involving the solar panel. If you need help for your system design, please click to the link in the description below and feel free to send us the problem and we're more than happy to help you to solve it. The solar panel indeed can supply for the mesh network, but it's quite expensive. And it's also very unpredictable. Now, if it's a rainy day or a cloudy day, it will reduce the power conversion. So the network will go offline after the power runs out. Today in our setup, not only we have to take care of the power problem, but also the signal. 500 feet is pretty far for a Wi-Fi signal transmission, even though it's an open area. So we need to bring both power and the data up to 500 feet. PoE will be the best option. The PoE can send power through the UTP cable, but it's limited to only 328 feet. So we need some kind of extension solution to repeat the data. Now, let's move on to the demonstration board and do the setup together. So here we are at the demonstration board. Let's begin the setup. First, this is a one in two out PoE extender. It will provide two outputs and we should place it right in front of our 328 feet. So let's place it in the middle. Now let's do it from the beginning. Pretend this is the main network and we are going to connect it with our PoE injector. The data port for the main network and the PoE port for our cas cable and we'll talk about the injector later. Now let's move over here to plug in the PoE extender. Now we just plug it in. The lights is already on, it's pretty easy. Now we are going to use the first port for our verse SS point and we just plug it in here. It's pretty simple the whole setup. Now we have the second out port, output port. So let's connect it with our SS point from the destination because the PoE extender can extend for another 328 feet and we only need about 250 feet from the destination, so it's more than enough. Now, it's in already, and the indicated lights are about to come on, and you can see it's on already. So the whole setup is pretty easy, right? So in order to get the whole system up, you also need the PoE injector. This is a 30 volt PoE injector and it can inject about 30 volts of power into the cables. Now, those two access points require about 8 volt each, so it's more than enough to supply for those access points. Since the access points are PoE compatible, so they can receive power from the PoE injector. Now, both power and data are being handled by the PoE technology. And we still have some few tips for you. You still can have the mesh network even though the two SS points are hardwired to the switch. They both share one gig of speed. So the bandwidth actually is better than the Wi-Fi bridge connection. Now today I chose the CAT6 cable because the CAT5e cable can only provide 100 megabyte per second. And don't forget to use a wrench to fasten your PoE extender when you install it is for a better waterproof results. Now, please watch another video on how to install multiple IV devices using an outdoor PoE power switch. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.